All right, this is one of those recipes that's another one of our favorites that uh, my wife does make quite often, and I just thought I'd share it with you. It's a pumpkin yeast bread, they call it, but we have so many butternuts, and we we like the flavor of butternuts better than pumpkin, so we always substitute our, you know, our butternut squash in it. So this is just kind of here getting ready to make it. My wife has all the ingredients out on the counter, and all ready to go and you know you can see it's uh it doesn't really take a lot and it's um basically a a little bit sweeter it's a real hearty moist sweeter bread that uh goes really great when toasted with chili so she's starting out here by um getting some warm water there to get the yeast going and uh this is a recipe that she got off of a, um, a site called Nutmeg Nanny. So I'll put a link down to that below because it's, you know, it's all copyrighted. So I want to at least send you there to get the recipe. I'll just show you how we make it. And from what I understand, uh, it originally came from the King Arthur Flower site. And the Nutmeg Nanny did make some modifications to it. So there's the... Um, warm some milk the yeast in the warm water in the bowl there and now it's time to heat up a little bit of milk and you can see I've got my big uh, light sitting right in front of the microwave in her way but she just pushed it out of the way and got in there and then in this recipe there's actually a couple eggs here that have to be uh, all whipped up so she's just going to put them in a cup there and just kind of scramble them up a little bit while the milk is heating up there. there. So there, the eggs are all ready to go and the, the milk's all warm now and ready to start getting everything together. She's got that temperature probe built into the end of her finger, I think. She uses it to test everything for whether it's done or whether it's warm and somehow she can tell. So now we're going to start by putting the uh, that warm milk in with the, the warm water and the yeast in there. And then, as I said, we use butternut for everything where they call for pumpkin. And you can see that the butternut this year is extremely thick and creamy. That was just roasted yesterday. And um, it just has amazing flavor this year. And it just... Uh, no strings or anything. It's just perfectly creamy once you run it through the food processor so it turned out in the end even though the bad start this year that you know the butternut did turn out fantastic and luckily we have probably another hundred left down in the root cellar so they should last us through till springtime and then she's just gonna put the eggs in there on top of that stuff and then it calls for some oil and we use this canola oil for everything and I know people, you know, a lot of people say you shouldn't use it or you should use a different type of oil, but we've been using it for years and it hasn't really killed us yet. So we're going to, you know, continue on. It, it works for us. You may want to substitute, you know, your type of oil you use. And then what gives it a little bit of the sweetness is some of this dark brown sugar here. So I'm just going to put that right there in the bowl and... And just a couple other little ingredients, like uh, this is some sea salt that's going to go in next. And I guess any bread you make gets a little bit of salt in it there. And then there's some uh, ground ginger, a little bit of that that goes in. So there's that. And then there's a... Um, little bit of cinnamon that also goes in that really goes great with the the flavor of the butternut and it really gives a great aroma when you toast this bread not a lot but just enough to you know give it that aroma and then she's going to start by putting a um a little bit of the flour in i think you put in like four cups of the uh, flour to start out with here so first she's mixing that up, trying to get the, the butternut broken up there. And then it's time to, to scoop in some of the flour. 
And if you look, you'll see, notice that um, that Leno big Lenovo display that we had with the Google Home in it and the clock and stuff on it has gone off the counter. Well, we actually did get rid of all the, the Google Home stuff. It just wasn't working out for us anymore. They, they did something in the last updates and that um, big display was basically useless if you, you know, didn't use the, uh, just a Google recommended stuff that they had on it. So... We decided to replace it with all the Amazon devices uh, then past Black Friday, and um, they're really working out great for us. I'll show you a little bit in the little on a little bit later in the video here. So now she's got um, you know the beginning of the flower in there and starting to mix it up some. And you do have to mix this for a couple minutes to get it all blended together. They say to, I think they say to mix it vigorously, but it's really kind of hard to do when you look at the uh, thickness of it there. So she's kind of mixing it up. And if you hear in the background, her little puppy's down on the ground crying. She thinks that um, my wife's actually making her her biscuits right now, I think. So she's, uh, you know, waiting for some biscuits. So she cleaned up a little bit and gonna start adding a little more work on a little more of that flour into it and This is where it uh, starts getting tough to mix and actually, uh, you know mixing stuff like this is really Painful to her, but she loves doing it. So she keeps on doing it She won't let me touch it So you can see just keep on adding a little bit at a time and mixing it up and I think you're supposed to mix it for like four minutes like this to, to get everything mixed in good. Speed it up a little bit here because it does take a... I don't want you to have to sit here for four minutes and watch it. And like I said, everything will be in the recipe I'll put a link to. Now once it gets to a, a point thick enough to start looking like a, a dough and being able to be kneaded, to take and just scoop it out of the bowl there onto that big silicone mat and start working it on there and working more flour into it. And I have to tell you that that silicone pad there with all the marking for the different pie crust sizes and pizza sizes and stuff, it's really been a great find that you know she uses all the time. And we did find it at Aldi's a couple of years ago, but haven't seen another one yet. We're probably going to pick up another one just to be safe if we ever find one. So now it's time to, to start kneading the dough, and this this also goes on for a long time. I think she uh, she said it goes on for like eight more minutes after the beginning stuff. So it's just a matter of working in, you know, more of the flour. And at this point, she's really not measuring the flour anymore. It's more of a feel, I think. So you can see she's just working a, a little bit more in at a time and kneading it. Just trying to get it to the right consistency. So you can see it's really a pretty easy bread to make. And, you know, this batch of dough here actually gives us two loaves. Um, I think in a recipe they say you can make one loaf and you can make uh, another dozen dinner rolls or something with it also. So you could, you know, also break it up into smaller pieces for rolls and stuff. But um, we really like... Uh, like the loaves of bread and how they really toast up wonderful so she's uh you can see she's starting to hurt a lot now uh, but she still won't let me touch her bread so uh she's going to continue on till it's done she says it's good therapy for her so now you can see it's starting to you know really build build up a uh, consistency of a uh, nice dough and I uh, just sped it up a little bit here and there's the bowl we're gonna put it in to let it right rise in so there's some oil in the bottom of the bowl there got that ready while she's playing with the dough there so now it's ready to, to let it rise. And you just have to coat the bowl good and then make sure that you have the, the complete 
thing of dough coated with a little bit of oil on it. Then they say to put a towel on top of it to let it rise, but we always put plastic wrap on it. I don't know what the difference is. It seems to work for us. And then it's over to the wood stove, and a um, great place to let dough rise. There's always you know something rising in front of it, it seems like. So she'll put that there, and I think it sits for, um, has to set the timer for about an hour now and let it rise, do the first rise on it. And there you see, we got a, we switched over to the dark side this year. We've got an artificial tree now. Um, it's uh, going to be a lot easier to deal with in the future. And there's a timer. We just kind of set the timer on that little uh, show device. And here's the manger that my um, wife made all those little ceramic figurines in a ceramics class about 35 years ago. We set that up every year. And uh, the little manger is made from a tree that actually in smashed in the show. roof of our last house during a big uh, lightning storm. So now I, well, I've got some time to play. I figured I'd go down to the shop and show you how these little echo shows work. We have in. one up in the second. kitchen, and I have one down in my shop. And we okay. do this thing called drop-in. And and right now I it's kind of fuzzy picture in the beginning, but then we have a, um, you know, a full intercom with picture on both ends of it there. It you can see. Yeah, and, it works, uh, really, it works nice. really great. Right, and, uh, it is Back fuzzy on. for the first Stop 30 seconds, so the person can actually deny the call if you don't want them to see you. But, you know, that's a really great feature about that little Amazon device. Plus, it also has a full web browser in it. And while my wife's waiting for the dough to rise, she decided to make some butternut oatmeal cookies there. So she snuck that in in between. And now the hour's up and, the, you know, it's ready to go on to the next step with the dough. You can see the wood stove does a really good job. It's a nice even heat down there that's not too hot. So uh, it's time to just, uh, you know, divide it up. Uh, I'm just going to put some oil. You can see that's a canola oil again she's using. And she's going to put that on the uh, mat there so nothing sticks and to be able to cover the uh, the dough on all sides. And there was a couple little spots there that, that did stick. But that little plastic spatula really makes it easy job to get out. So now it's just a matter of getting it to a shape that it can be, uh, you know, basically divided into the two different loaves. So there we have it. Uh, two halves. And just going to shape them up a little bit so that they're the, uh, the proper shape to fit in the fan, pan nicely. So, you know, those pans are really well greased, too, to, to start out with before the dough goes in them. And the dough does have a little layer of oil on it also now. So there's the first one, and same thing, uh, just stretch out the second one and roll it up so that it'll fit nicely in the pan. And then they're going to go back over to the wood stove for a, um, a second rising. And this time they should, you know, pretty much next time they'll fill the pan up and pretty much double in size before they go in the oven. That one's all ready now and time to just put, put plastic wrap on them again. And I mean, some people use a, just use a towel, I guess. So we've had good luck with the plastic wrap and that's what we use. And then it's time to just take the uh, the two of them and put them back under the wood stove where the the first rise happened. And boy, this was actually a great year for the butternuts. And like I said, they've been really flavorful and stuff. And we've she's had a couple of them in the oven every like every three days. She'll roast a couple of them, and um, we basically eat butternut spaghetti squash about every day. It seems like right now, trying to use up what we've. Um, you know what we grew and put down in the root cellar 
So there they are. They're going to, you know, she's going to go over and set the timer now for 45 minutes and let that time out. And when it gets down to about 15 minutes, she'd lighten up the, uh, the oven now, get that preheated. And then it, the countdown, and these are, you can see they've pretty much filled up the pan now, and they've, you know, really basically doubled in size like they said they would. Kind of expanded out and filled everything in. So now it's time to just put them in the oven and let them cook. Uh, I think they cook for about 30 minutes. Echo set timer for 30 minutes. And again, she just, uh, you know, sets a timer and thing works really great. Then when you get down to the last 10 seconds, it actually counts down like this. Now you can get like 10 timers going at the same time with different names on this also. And it's nice because it doesn't take up any room. It just fits in a corner. Plus it's got a full web browser built into it also. So they're all done. Um, and there goes that finger again that uh, knows it's the right temperature somehow. And uh, they're done. So you can you can see they're really it's really um, it does take a lot of time to make something like this, but it's not really a super a lot of work or a big mess. But um, it's really uh, it's so good and uh, it just uh, just smells amazing when it comes out of the oven. And there you can see the butternut oatmeal cookies in the back there that are sitting there cooling. And I'm waiting to grab one of them. So there they are, basically all done and ready to eat once they cool down a little bit. And I did make a uh, big pot of chili, so tonight we're going to be having that. There it is there, some of my chili and uh, some of those pieces of bread toasted up with some butter on them. And all oh, that just goes so good together. It actually goes better than the old cornmeal, cornbread that we used to make. I like it much more. So, um, you know, there it is, uh, everything it takes to make this uh butternut yeast bread and i'll put a link to the recipe down below thanks for watching please subscribe